that today is a celebration day. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are we ready to praise God this morning? Yes. Let's put on our garment of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will celebrate our God. We will celebrate.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we join our hands together with our neighbor as we sing the redeemed mountain? We are in the mind, united in love. We are this for all. We shall fall. We are together. We are. Expressed in my spirit is just something of God's promise and faithfulness. Like you said in the book of Numbers 23, verse 19, has he promised something that did not come to pass? No, he's not a God that he shall lie. What he said he would do, he would do. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, this morning, I'm privileged to stand in front of you to minister a song. I was eight years old when I started, sorry if I'm distracted, I'm, I was eight years old when I started ministering. And by his, grace, by his grace, God has given me the strength, the boldness to go anywhere I'm called to minister his word. Amen? Amen. And it's a special privilege for me this morning. Amen. When I read the book of Eli, uh, Prophet Eli, what the, what the Lord told Eli about his ministry, Eli was a man of God that fears God. But one thing that he failed to do as a prophet, as a leader, as a father, he failed to raise his children in the fear of God. And because of that, God told Eli, because of this, I will make sure things don't go well for you. I might not be quoting exactly, but when I read that story, it blessed me. So today, with all privilege and humility, as they're inaugurating the church today, it is with honor and a privilege that today, by God's grace, I'm going to officially inaugurate my nine-year-old daughter into ministry with me this morning. She's going to minister with me this morning. All along, I've been looking for people, backup singers and all that, not knowing I have one right under my roof. Hallelujah. So please, um, don't pay attention to the voice. I want the words to bless you. And I want God to minister to you this morning. Amen. While we were waiting for the instrument to come. Mm -hmm. 
faithfulness of eternal glory. Still remain your sons and daughters, earth revealing heaven's wonders. Spirit come, Spirit come. What you spoke is now revealing. And your children shall behold it. Dreams are waking in this moment. Spirit come. celebration and inaugurating the Lord's house. So we welcome you. Uh, govern yourself accordingly to the uh, Sunday announcements on Sunday. Our services are at 10 a.m. to 12. Bible studies Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. And we are having
the uh, National Conference, RCCGNA, June the 13th to the 15th. So please, if you can, um, get your time off so you can come out and be blessed by that event. Do we have any first time visitors? First time visitors, if you wave your hand, wave your hand. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I need some backup because y'all don't want me to see. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Father, from the north, 
from the south, from the east, from the west. Everyone that of ordained to be in this place, let them begin to release them now. Shall we pronounce the Lord Almighty? Everyone that of ordained that are in this city, wherever they may be from all nationality, that we want to use for restoration and empowerment house. Lord, let the angels of God begin to locate them this day, O Lord, and begin to order their step into this place, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, wherever they may be, wherever they may be, O Lord, by yourself, begin to locate them and bring them in, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And he says, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. Let's ask the Lord and say, Father, fill this assembly to the glory and to the praise of your holy name. Shall we ask the Lord Almighty that God by himself will build this place in the mighty name of Jesus. God will raise up men to become angels, angels to become men, to walk with our brother in this assembly in the mighty name of Jesus. God himself will build this place. The gate of hell will not prevail over this over the church in this in this town. In the mighty name of Jesus. God by himself will increase his church. He will increase us in every area. The medical and financially will increase us. We will make the church to dominate in this land. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will enlarge his church by himself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we just want to say thank you. What else can we say to a loving father? Who so much loved us and he gave his best for us. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Our heart is full of gratitude. For the great things that we have done even in our midst this day. So we should not disperse a little beginning. Though our beginning might be small. But our latter end shall be big. Amen. Then there is a few over restoration and power. By yourself, my Father and my God, you will build this church to the glory and to the praise of your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let men become angels. Angels become men. To walk with our brother in this life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that have raised to be used in this assembly, from all nationality, wherever they may be, Holy Spirit, Begin to fish them out. Yeah. And begin to you know, direct them here in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. As you speak to them, they will not resist to Lord. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Daddy, today is a glorious day. Today is a special day. Yeah. Daddy, each and every one of us that are worshiping here today, give us a special miracle. Yeah. A miracle that we will remember and we say, the day we came to the inaugural service of restoration empowerment, the Lord did this for me. Let that be our testimony this day. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. Concerning the meeting of today. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Every agent, every demon assignment, the blood of the Lamb is against you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. At the end of the program, we shall return all glory unto you. The blessing be ours. And the shame to the devil. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. children of the Most High God, they have some Bible recitation for us. Amen. Simon is going to give us a Bible recitation while Sister Selema is going to sing for us. Amen. God is not a man that he Son lying was a son of man that he said was 
with it and he said in three will he not do or, or has spoken and will he not make it Amen. Yeah. We have just read for us number chapter 23, verse 19. Amen. God bless you.
House CG Extension Arena Stanford, Connecticut. We share with one of our co minister, Sister Puka, the Nisadi, the instrument that the Lord used when I was in Stanford, Connecticut to move this church. And today they are here all the way from Stanford to celebrate this day. Then let's clap for Jesus who has come and beloved pastor who have blessed you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. She is a good singer. She was my praise leader. <laughs> Amen. How many of us are ready to bless the Lord with our offering this morning? The Bible says that look, God loves a, a cheerful giver. Amen. We ready? I don't know if you know my song, but just flow with me. Amen. All glory, all honor.
to be able to give back to you that which you blessed us with. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to us to be a partaker of this great movement, the great work that you have begun in this place. Father Lord, unto you, we give this offering. Accept us and accept our offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we go and we send this offering on an errand. That as the inauguration of this party, as as as, as it is, as, as as we are doing it today, we will let this offering go forth to release every resources, financial, physical, human resources that will be needed in this parish to cover grants for you in Little Arkansas. Let this offering go forth to set the release of those things into the life of everyone here in the mighty name of Jesus. That that which you have said to do, you will do it through this offering in the name of Jesus. As many that has given, Lord, that you bless abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that are willing to give for one reason or the other, they cannot give financially. That when next they come, oh Lord, that you will have blessed them and they will ask. Cause to give to the glory and to the praise of your name. Thank you, Father Lord God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name, we are free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Reverend, if you are happy to be here, praise the Lord. Reverend, we still have room in the house. We still have empty chairs. So if uh, we have some people sitting outside, please, uh, can you ask them to come inside? Please, please, usher, help us. I want to specially welcome every one of you for coming. We are all special before God. And uh, the Lord has made this day a special day. Uh, if you look at the flyer, it's a no more defeat. Amen. Because uh, the history of this church, they said uh, 14 years ago, there was an attempt to plant this uh, branch of the redeeming in this uh, community. But in one way or another, we don't know what transpired and it failed. It's like Isaac became worse and the enemy covered them up. But this one has come to stay. Amen. And I will use this opportunity to thank everyone that has made this work a reality. Especially, let me start from our darling beloved, Pastor Daniel Ajaya Delinon. For those of us who don't know him, he's one of our big person in the day. He has been an assistant to the uh, shaman in our city, North America. But presently, he's the one in charge of our CCG. Region 5. Let's do the rest of the sister. Six. Hallelujah. <laughs> Brethren, from the day one, he has been so, you know, encouraging, encouraging, not only with his mouth, but financially, you know, the equipment you are saying, he bought there for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And not only that, we have the man of God that is sitting beside him, in person of Pastor Rulat Alabi. He is the senior congressor of Texas 12. Brethren, there are some people that God will use to push you into success. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Whether you like it or not, they will push you beyond your strength. He's one of them. Pastor, there was no day, if I don't hear from him physically, there won't be a testimony. If you don't test me, he will call me every day. I'm not talking about. If I'm traveling, he will ask me where I is, like another pastor move in the special arena. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Our pastor, we are grateful. I know that we have a lot of people that if I begin to mention names, time will not permit us to do that. Right from the day one we step into this place, there are some families that God has used. They will gather us together, like person like Pastor Dr. Sean goes, it's like the bar, like, it's very quiet. Let's talk from this show. <laughs> you are blessed. Sir. And by the time we went to the house to pray with our evangelist, the woman of God, with the husband, they are so helpful. These people that God has prepared them waiting for the coming of the church. Hallelujah. So this morning, the Lord is here to bless you. He's 
chair to do something unique in your life. And I want to thank God, bless God for our choir. You know, this choir, just by their schedule, they are, they are students, with their summer, they still fight out to come to the church or they ask to do everything. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And my wonderful in law, all the way from Houston to celebrate this glorious day with us. With the wife. God will bless you. And this wonderful gentleman you are seeing is very talented in the people. So, the Lord will bless you all. Amen. And I want to tell you a short story of the first family that we met in this church. I was called to attend an interview. And I went there and saw this young man sitting on white. He looks like black American. We were just sitting. He wasn't talking to me. I wasn't talking to him. We were just looking at ourselves. And later, I don't know what break the, the silence. Something just happened and I said, are you from Nigeria? Said, you are from Nigeria? Said, you are from Nigeria? Oh, I said, ah. who are you? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, I said, do you know my wife? I've been looking for this church for a long time. He said, before, we don't talk about church in our home, but when I go home, I will give her the flyer. And brethren, because for a long time it has been just two of us, my wife and I alone. I remember when my wife traveled to New York and he called me, how was the service today? I said, oh, service? I said, I can't even number the people. And you understand? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But God brought this from us. Since then, this church has not remained the same thing. And our brother, there have been so to be corners of the ghost land. This brother that you are looking at here is like my backbone here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he did a lot of things. God is a talented man. So let's put our hands up for everyone. Especially our beloved mommy. Mommy, you have something to tell the church today. Mommy, come for just say hello to the church because Mama has been a blessing to us. Praise the Lord. for you, because by the time we planning for the first anniversary, it's going to be a more glorious way. Amen. Amen. I can hear Amara shouting Amen at the back. Praise the Lord. To your blessing, Jesus' name. So at this junction, we want to rise up to our faith. Brethren, today be expectant. God is about to do something new in your life. He's ready to do something wonderful. We still have room for more special number uh, after the message. But we want to hear the message. At this time, we want to welcome our daddy, the Lord, Pastor Daniel Ajayi. And the best part of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices unto heaven as we appreciate God. One more time this afternoon. Only the living soul can praise God. Only the living can shout hallelujah. Only the living can ask for help. Only the living can pay bills. Only the living can go to work. Let's give him all the glory. Let's celebrate him. He's the reason for our living. He's the reason for our existence. He woke us up this morning because he's not yet tired about us. There are still a better day ahead of us. Let's give him all the glory. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. You may not have everything that you desire to have yet. And truth of the matter is, you are not going to have everything until you see Him in glory. Your need will always drive you towards God. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Celebrate Him. Give Him all the glory. Tell Him how loving He is. Tell Him. Who he is to you, tell him what you think about him. He wants to hear you. He wants to hear you if he's your father. Let him know he's your father. If he's your provider, let him know he's your provider. If he's your protector, let him know he's your protector. He is the one that has been defending you. He is the one that has been putting food on your table, not your strength, not your energy, not 
your career, not your profession, not your certificate. It is the one that has been giving you sad health for you to go out to come back. Thank him not because you have good medical insurance, not because you have good medical doctor. It's because he is your God. He is your father. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there for you. When nobody is there for you, he's always there. When nobody cares about you, he cares about you. He's a father in me. He's a friend in me. Celebrate your maker. Because he keeps you alive today. It's an indication that he has a better tomorrow for you. Thank him. With all that you have passed through, with all that you are passing through, you are still here. Appreciate it. Not because you are better than others that have gone to the other side. It's just by the mercy of God. The Bible says it's by his mercy that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness. If the Lord will regard iniquity, who can stand? Nobody can stand in the presence of God. If God has to regard iniquity, if God has to deal with us based on our frailty, our fraud, our failure, our sins, our iniquity, nobody will be able to stand before him. Let's thank him because he's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a long-suffering God. He's a caring God. He's a God that loves his own unconditionally. Without any string attached to it. Man can love you because they are getting something back from you. Man will love you because they are getting something in return. But this God loves you unconditionally. Without you giving anything back. Even when you are lovable, he loves you. When you are lovable, he loves you. The Bible says when we are yet sinners, he died for us. Appreciate the maker of heaven and earth. The ruler of the universe. He is the governor among nations. He is the governor over the state of Arkansas. He is the governor over the city of Little Rock. He is the governor over your life. He is the governor over your family. Celebrate. Celebrate him. King of glory, we appreciate you. We thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to get it as a family. We thank you for what you are doing in Little Rock, Arkansas. We are grateful. Thank you for every family represented in this house. Thank you for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every child. We give you all the glory. Only you is worthy to be praised. Only you is worthy to receive our praise. Because you are the one that matters. You are the one that matters. You are the one that matters. We celebrate you. Eternal glory. Malepro Kalibo Sika Yaba. Rekete Libro de Libo Sika Yaba. Marando Libro Koto Yaba. In this house today we want to see you, O God. We want to feel you. We want to embrace you. We want to go touch us. We want to go move in our lives. Move in our homes. Move in our circumstances. Move in this city. Move in this state. Move in our great nation. Move in the entire universe. Oh Lord God, our help. Our help in ages past. Our very present help in eternity. And our hope in the years of God. You are our happiness. We celebrate you. You are the only one that can be God. You are the only one that can be God. You are the only one that can be our Father. We adore you. You are the one that rides on the wings of wings. You are the one that rules in the affairs of men. The Bible says, Heaven is your throne, as is your footstool. You are the one that you do as you please. Nobody can question you. What goes down? The Bible says, Who is he that says and the come to pass? When the Lord has not spoken, you are the one that has the final say of our lives. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying, it's inconsequential. It's what you say that matters. And concerning us, you have said good things. You say it is well with us. It is well with us. We shall not die, but we will live. To declare your glory in the land of the living. We thank you. We give you all the glory. The God of the redeemed Christian Church of God. The covenant giving God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of my fathers. The God of Pantos and Akinayo. The God of Enoch and Tejan and Jehovah. Our God, we celebrate you in this house. We appreciate.
But when the purpose of day is abused, it becomes a bondage. When the bond, when the purpose of night is abused, it becomes a bondage. Now, the Bible talks about the parable of the sower. Or sorry, the parable of the seed. This is the parable of the wheat. He said, enemy came when men slept and plant wheat or tars, T-A-R-E-S, which is also, it means wheat, in the wheat. Wheat is the good thing that the farmer has planted to grow so that his family can have food to eat. But wheat looks like, tars look, look like Wheat, tax looks like wheat. It's difficult for you to distinguish between the two. And that's what the devil does. He is very corny. He will bring something that is fake, but looks like original. If you are not sure, you don't know the original very well, you will mistakenly embrace the fake as the original. So that's what he does. It will be so close to the original. So that's why it will plant tars in the wheat. Because tars looks almost like wheat. But it does it in the night. In the night, in that perspective of the scripture, is a time that a man becomes weary and weak. It's a time that devil takes advantage of a man. It's not just night in the physical that means the time of sleeping. It's a time that you become weary is your disadvantage time. That weakness sets in instead of strength. And devil is so cunning that he takes advantage of every time. He does not sleep as it were. He's so meticulous in what he does. And that's why Christian must always be awake because every little opportunity it takes advantage of it. So you are going to pray. I don't know who that person is, but the Lord has me to tell you that your night season, you are staying in the night season for long. You must enter your day. Amen. Heaven has been taking advantage of you for long. You want to pray and say, Father, Father every, power every power that has kept me in the night when I suppose to be in the day, let that power be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer is very, very important because in that night season, they will we afflict, they will we, we destroy, it will steal. That's when he steals the good things of life from an individual. That's why he destroys good things of life in the life of an individual. Every prolonged night season of my life come to an end. Every prolonged night season. It's true that every man will pass through night season. There's nobody that will say you are so strong you will not have a time of weakness. But when you stay longer than necessary in your night season, devil takes advantage. You want to say every prolonged night season of my life come to an end today in the name of Jesus. Jehovah go bring an end to every night season of my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I want us to pray this prayer very well because you see, defeat will not just come. It, it comes at a particular time. Because the Bible made it clear in the book of Ecclesiastes that there, chapter 3, there is time for everything. And devil is a master you know, strategist, either you believe it or not, he looks for the best way to shoot or hang to eat you with that how. And that's what he does. And that's why as Christians, we must always be on our toe. The Bible says we should watch and pray that we will not fall into the trick of the devil. We must watch and pray, not just pray, Many Christians pray, they don't watch. The Bible says, watch first, then you pray. 
because we have to pray with understanding and with knowledge. Many pray, they don't watch that part of watching is where knowledge and wisdom comes in. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 5, Jeremiah 6, verse 5, I wish the engineer can help me. Jeremiah 6, 5. He said, Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy his palaces or her palaces. Why is it it's night that they want to go? Because he knows that in the night they will be sleeping. And it's not just physical night here. Spiritual night is a time of weakness where you are asleep. You are asleep. You become weary. Things of life weigh you down. Burdens of life weigh you down. Circumstances of life weigh you down. You have been praying. You have been doing the right thing as Christians. Answers are not coming. It comes to a time that you become discouraged and weary. It's the time Elijah has to run from Ahab and Jezebel. The man just conquered 450 prophets. And he was telling God, take my life. I am not better than my father. That is his night season. If God has not stepped in at that time, he would have missed it because he would not have fulfilled his ministry. And that's why he said, it doesn't matter how powerful you think you are spiritually. There will always be night season. That's why you need to pray. Your night season must not be prolonged. Amen. Amen. That is it. He said, let us go at night and take good things from there. And you will agree with me. In 1 Kings chapter 3, you will read like, as 19, that's the first examination that Solomon, you know, passed through. The moment he became king, then the first text that God put it before him is that two adults that had two children, each one has a child. And they slept in the night. And one slept on her own child, and the child died. Go and read first King chapter 3. And the child died, and the one that is, I mean, a child died, woke up and discovered that her child was dead. And quickly changed her child, the dead child, and took the living child and placed it by her side. And when the mother of the supposed to be living child, woke up. He said, this is not and he, she, she saw dead child. But as I said, this is not my child. And there was fight. But they took their case to the king. If God has not used Solomon because of the wisdom of God to discern that, oh, this is the real mother. That woman would have handed up stealing what it's a blessing to the other woman. And everything happened in the night. You know how many blessings they have stolen from you in the night. How many battles you have lost in the night. In your dream, you dream all kinds of dreams. And you woke up, you think it's just a normal thing. Before you know it, it's coming to pass. You want to pray again. My Father and my God, Arise on my behalf. Every good thing that they have stolen in my life or from my life in the night, Jehovah God in this service, restore it back to me. Every good thing they have stolen from me in my night, oh God. I don't know, maybe, I think this is a praying church. It doesn't matter the level you have. You, you have not reached the peak that God wants to take you to. You need to pray. You need to keep praying as believers because the world is full of it. Whatever good thing they have taken away from you in the night, Jehovah God, please restore back in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. You see, I want us to be right in this scripture that because this, this, there's a body that I got this revelation when I was sitting down there. It's not, it's not the psalm I want to preach. But I believe somebody is passing through a nice season. And the enemy has been taking the good things, good stuff. Maybe your marriage, because you become so complacent. Maybe things are happening, you know, you are comfortable and you relax. And because of 
you know, your relaxation in pursuing God, the enemy is now taking good things from you. Maybe it's your child that is not doing the right thing, or your spouse that used to say, honey, honey, I love you, I love you, you are my honey, you are the honey in my tea, you are this, and all of a sudden, unnecessary quarrel, what not supposed to amount to quarrel, little thing, no, because quarrel, you are quarreling on it, because night, the enemy has invaded your life with night. And the Lord is going to deliver you. Amen. In the book of, if you read Genesis 28, you can read the old chapter. Jacob had an encounter with God when he was running to the house of labor. He had just told him the blessing of his brother, Esau. And the Bible recorded that night came upon him. And when the sun set, he could not continue. And he had a dream. But you remember from that very moment that the night set on him or the sun set on him and night came upon him everything went down this is a prince of god this is somebody that god himself said he has blessed nobody can cause him he said jacob have loved he so have hated and he went to the house of laban to become a slave somebody who is positioned as a prince he was cheated for over 14 years he suffered a lot because he entered a night season. But when he was coming back, he had an encounter with the angels. He, he wrestled with the angel with God and he prevailed. And in Genesis 32, the Bible recorded that his son rose. When he was going in Genesis 28, the sun set over him. He entered that season, night season. In Genesis 32, the sun rose, he entered day. And the Bible says there's a new dawn. Amen. So when he entered that new dawn, everything turned around. He saw that was threatening, he's going to kill, he became his friend. Everything began to work out. You see, when a man is in a night season, particularly a prolonged night season, it doesn't matter how hard you try. Your great effort will result into a little, a, a little, a little outcome or a little output or result. As you put that energy, Peter in Luke chapter 5 was under a night season. You remember they just arrested John the Baptist, their master, because he was a disciple of John the Baptist first before he became disciple of Jesus. So Herod has arrested John the Baptist and they are now in darkness. No their leader has been taken away from them. So, he entered night season, night of time of frustration. It's true that he toiled all night, he was fishing, he was bed, he was not in doing it with his right mind. You know, you can be walking out, but when your mind is not settled, you're not going to get anything tangible out of it. If you're a student, you are reading like crazy, but your mind is not settled, you're not going to assimilate anything. That's exactly what happened to Peter. He toiled all night. His heart was not where what, in what he was doing. His mind was not settled because his master was already arrested. But when Jesus, who is the morning star, the day spring, everything enter his life back. Everything turned around. I want you to pray another prayer. Rise on your feet if you can stand. We are going to talk to God and say, Father. Father. Every wasteful effort. Every wasteful effort. That the enemy. That the enemy. Has put me in. In this service. Jehovah God. Rescue me. Rescue me. Rescue me. Rescue me. Every, every, every labor without any result. Or tangible result. Every unproductive effort, every unproductive effort, Jehovah God that I've engaged in, then the, in one way or the other, the enemy has launched me to, has put me into Jehovah God. Rescue me! 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I don't know that person, but I believe God of heaven has rescued you. Amen. I've 
affliction will not rise the second time. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for like 10 minutes because I want to I want us to pray. Because you see, we need to pray particularly for this church and for ourselves this day that we have set aside to inaugurate the church officially. I want to congratulate Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Toby for this great day and every member of this great house. Amen. I believe God who has started a good work in all of us, we finish it. Amen. It's not a sin to start small, but it is a sin to, to remain small. Because every big thing in life starts small. God started small. In fact, it started out of nothing. The first day, he did some things. He looked back. He said, behold, it was good. He moved on. On and on, on and on. By the end of the sixth day, he has finished everything. Then, he rested. So, everything that you see that is big, they always start small. We started small in our mother's womb. A tiny egg. And spam, you know, and before you know it, started growing, and now we are here by His grace. That's why you must not despise the day of small beginning. Some people they want to start from up here, and that's why they still remain stagnant, remain in one spot because they they are looking at oh, this is where I supposed to. Be and things are not working that way for now. For example, if you have your first degree, your second degree, and you know that this is the kind of job you are entitled to by the virtue of the investment you have made in your education, and you're not getting that job, and you refuse to get settled for whatever that is available now to take care of your children, you might become an infidel. Or worse than an infidel, because if you are not able to provide for your own household, the Bible says that man is worse than an infidel. What I'm saying in essence is that because of the situation that we find ourselves in, not just in our country, in the entire universe, the economic situation, you can always find something to do. This is what I preach to my people. You can start small. Don't just sit on the excuse of, oh, I'm not getting what I was trained for, what I studied for. And because of that, you are waiting for after month after month, year after year, and the children are there to be taken care of. You can always start with something. And when God sees you faithful in that little thing, he will make way for you to settle you in a bigger place. That is the God that we serve. Every child of God must have that understanding that we must always get ourselves busy because if you don't get yourself busy doing the right thing, the devil will get you busy doing the wrong thing. This is very, very important. I pray for somebody that early you are believing God for a job and you have been applying and applying and applying and it's like what you are getting is not what you believe that this is. I am more than this. I know that you are more than that. But you see, the grace to step out and just take that small thing so that God can see that, ah, no, this man is really ready. You know, I mean, regardless of the hunger or the level is which is entering, that God will visit you Amen. and will put you in the right place Amen. where you belong. God can do it and he will do it. He's yeah. able to do it because there's nothing impossible with him. Time will not permit us. I just want you to, again, on your own, because I cannot read all the passages. Luke chapter 15, that is where I want to take my text and will I lead you into prayer. Luke 15, verse 11 to 32. Luke 15, verse 11 to 32 is the story of the prodigal son. It's a parable of the prodigal son in the Bible. And the Bible talks about this man, a father that had two sons. And one day the younger one woke up and said, Father, I want my portion of your inheritance. I 
want to live my life. I am grown up. I want my independence. And the father did everything to say, son, ah, wait for your time. There's time for everything. And when God, when it's God's time, he makes it beautiful. He said, no, that's you are old school. You know, this new generation. I just want it. I want to prove to you that with whatever you give me before you know in the next few years, I will multiply it. I want to be man. I want to be man. And father could not confess him further. He let go. And the Bible recorded that he went to a long, I mean, a far country. He got to that far country with, I mean, loaded coat and coat, because the father was rich. Loaded with softness. And he got there and he became a local champion, a star. Everybody became his friend because when you have people who gravitate towards you, it's when you don't have, you will know true friend. Uh, you say, oh, they are celebrating you. <laughs> be wise. Men are celebrating you, be wise. Be wise. He said, put, don't put your trust in any man. That doesn't mean that you should not fellowship with man. You should not love man, you should not trust. But what he's saying is, let your trust first be in God. And the Bible will say, what to a man that put his trust in another man? Because man is limited. God is unlimited. Why are you going to put your trust in a man that is limited? A man can only lift you up as far as his hand can take you. And the Length of a man, or the of a man's, the length of a man's hand is dependent on the height of that man. But now God sits in heaven and His heart is touching the, the heart. His feet is touching the heart. That means that God is really tall. Uh -huh. If somebody is sitting in heaven and His feet is touching the heart, is a very tall man. And that means His hand will be. In fact, the Bible says His hand is everlasting, so you, it doesn't have end. And he said, he will lift us with his righteous right hand. So if God says he's going to lift you up with his righteous right hand, and his hand is everlasting, then that means you are seated in everlasting place. That's why he said we are seated with him in heavenly places. So if you have that God by your side, you don't need to put your trust in any man. All you need to do is to trust that God and walk by speeding, by spreading, precept. So this man left. But we all know the story. Devil stripping of all everything that he had. And he became defeated. If there's anybody who will say he was defeated, this guy was really, really defeated. Because you see, you are not defeated when you have not fought any battle. The reason why I say you are defeated is because you have fought battles so or you have lost. If you have not engaged in any battle, then there is nothing that we say about defeat. What defeat means is that you have lost in a battle or in a race or in a competition. That's what it means to be defeated. He said to be defeated is it means to have failed in a battle or lost in a battle. And the Bible says in Job chapter 14, verse 1, Job 14, verse 1, that a man that is born of a woman is of few days, and those few days are full of trouble. So, in other words, there is tendency for us to suffer defeat in life. And defeat is not the end of life. Defeat is not the end of life. 
In fact, the feet is a ladder that can lead you up to a higher ground. That is the truth of the matter, and I will prove it to you in the scripture. Looking at passage of the scripture, Luke 15, we are looking. The whole family of this guy, we always look at this guy as the one that has suffered the feet, but look at it any way you want to think about it. The whole family was defeated. To me, the father was defeated. Because when the father has failed to be able to, you know, carry his son along and able to convince his son and put his son in the right place, when a son will be able to look I bought to his father and say, I don't need you in my life anymore. I am going. That means that father, one way or the other, has failed. And the story they tell us about the mother. We did not hear anything about the mother. Maybe it was a single, the father was a single parent. Maybe he has, he has lost his wife many years back. Nobody know. Maybe it's a separated home or a divorce home. Nobody, why would they tell us that? But it was only about the father. So where was the mother? And one thing I've discovered is that the mother knows how to reach out to the heart of her son in particular. In fact, they said the sons gravitate towards his mother and daughter gravitate toward her father. That's what they said. And that's true. But I've seen it. So that means if the mother has been there, probably they will be able to talk sense into her son and say, What's wrong with you? And more so is the youngest, not the oldest. So something went wrong. There was a dysfunction, you know, a, a marriage day or family. Something happened. So the family was defeated. Devil went after the family and de defeated the family. And that's why the father was not happy. He was desperate to get this boy back. So when he saw him coming back, he ran towards him and embraced him. And in the country where he went, you discover that he spent all and he ended up in a swine, that is, in pigry environment. And he was eating the food of the pigs, the swine. But one day, God visited him. That's the Point of driving home. And he came back to his senses. And he said, Wait a minute. I know I, I am defeated or I've been defeated, but I can still get out of this mess. Even though if I go back to my father and he said, Oh, I'm not going to accept you, I'm even better off than any of his servants. Let him even accept me as one of his servants. So he came back to his senses and he thought about something. That is possible, that can still happen. And that's what we need to understand. Even in any situation, we find ourselves that we are defeated right now. Maybe it's a career you would have loved to pursue, and one way or the other, you could not. Maybe if it's about your relationship, you thought that it's going to be like this, and it wasn't, it didn't come out the way you expected. Maybe it's one of your children that you have thought that, oh, this is what this son is going to become, this daughter is going to become, and all of a sudden things are not happening the way you thought it. The truth of the matter is you can still be a winner. You can still be victorious. The first thing is to come to the understanding that this is not the end of life. Because that's what that guy came up, he came to that understanding that this is not the end of life. And this is very, very important to me. And looking at many, I, I cannot be, I don't want to bombard you with too many scriptures, but there's one great man that lived in this country that we heard about and we still celebrating it tomorrow, Abraham Lincoln. Among our former presidents, 
in this great nation, he had a place that is highly celebrated. Abraham Lincoln failed many times. He was defeated many times. And I want to quickly read it. He said, Lincoln was a champion and he never gave up. Here's a sketch of Lincoln's road to the White House. 1816, his family was forced out of their home. He had to work to support them. 1818, his mother died. 1831, he failed in business. 1832, he ran for state legislature and lost. I was defeated. In 1832, that's in 1832, he lost his job. Wanted to go to law school, but couldn't get him. In 1833, he borrowed some money from a friend to begin a business. And by the end of the year, he was bankrupt. He spent the next 70 years of his life paying off this debt. In 1834, he ran for state legislation again. Won. 1835, was engaged to be married. Sweetheart died and his heart was broken. In 1836, I had a total nervous breakdown and was in bed for six months. In 1838, sought to become speaker of the state legislation, but defeated. In 1840, sought to become elector, but defeated. In 1843, ran for Congress, lost. In 1846, ran for Congress again. This time he won. Went to Washington and did a good job. In 1848, ran for re-election to Congress, but lost. In 1849, sought the job of land official in his home state, but rejected. In 1854, ran for Senate of the United States, but lost. In 1856, sought the first presidential nomination at his party's national convention, get less than 100 votes. In 1858, he ran for U.S. Senate again, and he lost. Probably his last failure. After what matters most is not how many times you fail, but that you never stop trying. And during so many great failures in life, the great Lincoln never quit and stretched a long road of failures to the destination of success. Only over obstacles coming now and then, in 1860, elected president of the United States. The Bible says, the righteous man Falling seven times, he will rise again. There was a woman in the book of John chapter 4. It was called Woman of Samaria. Nobody knew what her name was. She has married five times. I kept wondering, what is she changing men for? Like, you are changing garments in your wardrobe. Is it love to have sex? No. Is beyond that. Is it to have children? I believe it's beyond that. Because by the encounter they have with Jesus, I have a sense of feeling of the reason why they were changing men. There have not been any of the men that loved her from their heart. They loved her because I believe she was beautiful because you can't be married five times at that time if you are not beautiful. And if you, are, if you don't have soft hands, if you are liability to man, you will not be changing men like clothes. She was highly placed in the community. She was loaded, quote and unquote, financially. But she was looking for a man that will love her genuinely, not taking advantage of her beauty or her soft hands. But will love her genuinely the way she is, but she could not find it. And that's why when Jesus, you know, Jesus went and was waiting by her, was, sorry, was waiting for her by the well. That's one of the few occasions that Jesus will intervene in people's matter. People always come for help. But this time around, Jesus was waiting for this woman to come and meet him by the well. And when she was coming, she was coming by herself. On a normal circumstance, women grew together a group to fetch water. But she has become a disgrace. She has become a defeated foe. Nobody wanted to be a friend. Nobody wanted to have a telephone number. Nobody wanted to take a telephone number. 
Nobody will call her. Nobody. Man. They don't need to see her. I say, the process. Why is this coming? You say, oh, your friend is coming. Your friend is coming. Look at your friend. People will use and look at her. She became the subject of ridicule. People were sorry for him. People were pitying him. Or pitying her, rather. And Jesus, the one who loves us passionately, even in our failure, he loves us unconditionally, was there waiting for her. And that's why you see, when Jesus approached her, she thought probably it's another play ball. And she, the way she answered Jesus' will, see that she meant she was made. Because she has so far from the hand of five men. You can't blame her. She has passed through a lot from the hand of five men. So when Jesus came and he was talking to her, he said, eh, You also you have come. I know your trick. I've dealt with five of you. This time around, you cannot get me into it. But when Jesus touched a place of failure, a place of defeat, he said, Go and bring your husband. Say, look at them. Say, no, this is not a playboy. This is a prophet. Because that is the root of my failure. That is the root of my defeat. And when Jesus breathed upon her, for the first time, she saw a genuine lover that could embrace her the way she is. And that's why she did not wait for that. She will run into the city. The Bible recorded she ran. And once she was proclaiming everywhere, come and see the man that turned me on. Not my life. The man. All the five men before they called themselves, we are the man. But they are not really the man. They are boys. Because they don't know how to handle women like him, like her. When you are a husband, you don't know how to undo your wife. You are a boy. That's what it means. You are not a man. A man is somebody who is mature enough to undo a wife. Adam was mature before God brought him. He was complete. A complete old man. Mature. And then he gave him evil. I said, me. And he said, it's a weaker vessel. If somebody is a weaker vessel, what are you supposed to do? You treat an eye like an egg. A dish that must not be broken. I want us to rise on our feet. You are going to pray. Defeat is not from God. God may allow it, but it's not from God. Because anything evil is not from God, but God may allow evil. That's the difference. God may allow evil for many reasons. To glorify, one of the reasons is to glorify his name. There was a man that he healed. I was blind. And people were asking, who is a sinner? Who has saved? Is he the man or the parent? He said, none of them. He said, God allow it so that his name might be glorified. And God can allow evil to bring out what is really in us. Because many of us, if we are now tried, we will not we will not we will not reveal who we are. Not everybody can endure test and hardship. The Bible said the word of the Lord tried Joseph. And after he has tried Joseph and he realized that this guy is genuine. It doesn't matter the situation he finds himself, he is genuine. He loves God personally. When he has when he doesn't have, even when he's suffering for the right thing. He will, still, he will still stay by his God. I 
And when God saw that, he said, this is the one that can commit a whole nation into his hand. Because he has been tried and approved. God allowed the evils that Joseph passed through, all the evil, to try his heart. To see what is in his heart. Are you forgetting that he told him, right? He said, now I know that you love me. Now I know. God can allow the defeat to come because he wants to try what is in your heart. Many of us, when we have become so fat, we have eaten, we have fat, everything is rosy, everything is good. We will forget God. We say bye-bye to God. And that's why God keep allowing some defeats so that he will always keep us in order. We always have that need to run to God for help. Because God does not want to lose us. Remember what happened to Saul, the first king in Israel? The pale setter, the trailblazer, the pathfinder. God took him from nowhere. He became so big. And he lost his mind. And God said, when you were little in your own eyes, I took you from nowhere, I placed you over my people. I said, now, you are not fearing these people more than me. You said, because they want to stone you to death, who put you there? I didn't know who put you on the throne of me. Why don't you allow them to stone and let me be looking at you? And it's all lie. You know, people know how to they lie. They justify themselves and they think that God is not a righteous judge. There's no advocate that is beyond him. That's why I want you to pray in every area that you are passed through defeats because you yourself you open the door for defeats. You want to ask God for mercy. You want to ask God to forgive you. You want to ask God to have mercy upon you. And you want to pray that from now on, you will do your own part so that no defeat will come over you anymore. Let's rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet and begin to talk to God and say, Father, we thank you because you are God of victory. Victory belongs to you. Any area that I'm, I've suffered defeat or probably I'm suffering from defeat right now because I open the door for defeat to come in. Jehovah, God forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Lord, I pray from this day onward. Give me victory over every form of defeat. Every form of challenge, every form of situation that want to bring me honor or want to hold me down. Lord, give me victory. Let me be victorious. Let me be victorious. Let me be victorious. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Many things can lead to defeat. Sin is one of the things that can lead to defeat. Or rejection of God. When you refuse to accept Him, it can lead to defeat. When you refuse to recognize your state of despondent, your state of disobedience, and say, God, I am sorry. When you keep justifying your fault, you keep justifying your sin, you keep saying, because of this, because of that, that's why I did it. No. If you can call, that's, the, that's the difference between Saul and David. David always come before the Lord and say, Lord, I've messed up. I've blew it up. Have mercy. The soul will be justified himself. And that's the difference. And God always honor our sincerity. When we come to him the way we are, transparently, and ask for mercy, we forgive. Maybe you are here in this congregation. You need to do that now. You need to ask God and say, Lord, please, I surrender my life to you. I am tired of doing it by myself. I keep trying and I keep failing because I have not submitted my totality to you. I still have some reserved area, some no-go area. You allow God to operate in this area. You can say, God, okay, I will, you will be my God in this area, but this part, I'm still working on it. Give me some time. No, he wants your totality. Is there anyone? All oh, nice close, please. All oh, nice close. Is there anyone want to declare for him and surrender everything 
that is holding on since holding in this service. You want a new beginning. You want a fresh start. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus on this day so that something will be delivered. The baby will be delivered unto you that you will remember this day for good for the rest of your life. Wherever you are, just wave your hand. I want to pray with you. Or maybe you have not given your life to him at any time. And we want to do that today so that you will begin a new beginning. There will be a new beginning. Today will be your spiritual birthday. That God will begin to give you good gifts from now on. Anyone who wants to rededicate, just wave your hand wherever you are. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Anyone you want to rededicate, because we are going to pray two prayers, and I'm going to prophesy over your life. But for me to be able to do that, I want to be, I want to be sure that everything is in order. Anyone in the house, you want to rededicate your life, God bless you. You want to rededicate your life. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. Please pray, pray it in the best way you can do. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing me to your presence today. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. My Father, my God, I come before your throne. And I ask for mercy. That triumph over judgment in every area that I have not been doing what I'm supposed to do in my relationship with you. Please forgive me. I repent of all my sins and I ask for forgiveness. Wash me in the presence of the blood of your begotten Son. Lord Jesus, I write my name in your book of life. Give me a brand new beginning. I accept you as my Lord and Savior today. Never to look back again. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. And I want the entire church to lift up our voice and pray. I say, Father, Father from this very day, from this very day I, decree I decree that I will not be defeated. I will not, be defeated. I will not suffer defeat not suffer in any area of my life. life. Defeat is not my portion. Declare it. Let devil hear you. Let defeat hear you. Defeat is not my portion. I am not a defeated foe. I will not be defeated. The circumstances of life will not defeat me. The circumstances of life will not overcome me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Now, the last prayer when is some defeat that you enter into unknowingly. For example, Joshua caused anyone who will rebuild the wall of Jericho after they've conquered the, the land of Jericho, that God collapsed the wall. He now pronounced a curse. Whoever that will rebuild that wall, he said, he will start with the death of his first son, firstborn. And by the time he is relating it, it will be the death of his lastborn. And so, anyone that started to build what you Jericho, when the firstborn died, he stopped. So, that continued. So, when Elijah came, after he had received double portion of Elijah's anointing and crossed over River Jordan, the first assignment he did when he got to the land of Jericho, and the people of Jericho, they gathered, they said, this, the situation of this land is good, but the, the water is bitter, and the land is barren. And by the eyes of the spirit, he saw the, the problem, the foundation of that problem. Why everyone that tried to do anything, the land of Jericho always failed. He said, this cause has to be removed. And he asked for new crews and salt. And he went to the source and poured salt and said, this day, this barrenness is removed. If you go to the book of Ezekiel, Sorry, Isaiah chapter 38, 39. You can read 37, 38, 39. It's about Ezekiah. Ezekiah was sick to death, 38. And prophet Isaiah, God sent it to him that, yes, he's going to die. He's to tidy up his, his home. And when he looked at the whole thing, he said, where will I die now? Can the dead praise God? I still have a lot of work to do for him. I'm, 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 I refuse to die. And he turned his face to, to the one and he prayed and go hard and he sent back Isaiah. He said, Go and tell him he will no more die. I've had that 15 years to his year. But the next chapter, chapter 39, 
There was a situation. He said, my prophet Isaiah went back and said, this is what is going to happen. Your sons to come, and your generation after you, they will become, they will become servants. In the palace, they will become eunuchs in the palaces of the king of Philistine and the rest. Instead of him praying the same way he prayed the first time, I said, Go, please be merciful. He said, Well, as long as it's not happening in my own time, it doesn't matter. So he mortgaged the future generation, the life of future generations. There are some people that defeat, they, they were born into defeat, and they're growing up in defeat. Their family, they never start anything and complete it. They always come last in every... When all other people have gotten their own, they are the ones that always come last. Because there's a generational problem. There's a foundational problem. It doesn't matter how lucrative, how, how productive, how fruitful the environment, the family, they, they keep struggling. Keep struggling. They can be in the midst of plenty and still be living like a proper dry of water and wells of wood. Even when they go into a professional that, that is lucrative, or that may be public, may be shiny in their profession, and they are still struggling. I remember a medical doctor in New York City. He has his own clinic. They have to take you to his clinic for you to know that he's indeed a medical doctor. But there's nothing about him that represents a medical doctor. His life is loaded with problems. And if there's any lucrative profession anywhere in the world today, maybe the medical doctor is one. But his own medical doctor is a cause of other medical doctors. You are going to pray his final prayer. Any foundational problem that is still speaking in your present, any foundational issue speaking in your present, the present situation speaking against your present situation that is causing defeat in your life, you are going to ask that the blood of Jesus will visit that foundation and wipe it out, wipe it out. Let that foundation call and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I stand on a solid rock upon your word that is your foundation. Every faulty foundation, every generational problem, oh God, that is speaking against my present situation, that is causing defeat in my present situation, Jehovah God, let your blood, let your blood, the blood of Jesus, let it visit such foundation and let it be uprooted, 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 uprooted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to join our hands together. Let's join our hands together. As a family, I want you to now prophesy into the life of your brother or your sister you are holding. He said, if two of you shall agree or not touching anything, he said, I will do it for you. So one we chase a thousand, two we put ten thousand to fly. You are going to begin to shout it that in the life of my brother, in the life of my sister that I'm holding there, there is no more defeat, no more defeat. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree concerning my brother, concerning my sister that I'm holding their hand, no more defeat in their life in their home, in their family, in their business, in their career, in their academy, in everything they do, no more defeat. They are about defeat in the name of Declare, 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 declare. Let ever hear you. Let ever hear you. No more defeat. No more defeat concerning your head. You will not suffer defeat anymore. No sickness will hold you down. That fibro, let it begin to melt. That abro pressure, let it begin to disappear. That cancer, let it begin to disappear. Let it begin to dry up. That diabetic, what are you waiting for? Pack your load and baggage and get out of that body. In the name of Jesus, we are a stranger. The Bible said the stranger will be troubled and they will leave their house with fear. The Bible said, now the axe is laid unto the root of the 
tree. Every tree that is not producing good fruit will be held. That evil tree that is growing in your body, I command it to wither now. Dry up, dry up, dry up, dry up. Let the Lord begin to open doors for you. Let our door open. Right our doors open. Everywhere you turn to our destinies, begin to come to you in the name of Jesus. You will not more suffer failure. You go for any interview, you will be prevailed above your peers. You go for any exam, you will come out in fly color. In the name of Jesus. I don't care how long, how many exams you have taken concerning that like sexy exam. How many cities? As you go this time around, you will come out in fly color. In the name of Jesus. You go for business engagement. You will be prevailed. You will no more lose in the name of Jesus. Whatever power that has been holding you down, I command that power to let you go now. In the name of Jesus, lose your grip. Every power, every strength power holding your ministry down. Let not that not allow your ministry to shine as God wants it to be. That power I command you. Die in the name of Jesus. That strange babe, that strange babe that always come in the middle of the night to torment you in your dream. That strange babe. Command that train me for and die in the name of Jesus. You are scared of the night because of all kinds of nightmares. All kinds of nightmares. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The power of God is working in your life now. The power of God is working in your life. You will no, you will no more be tormented in your life. You will no more be tormented in, an, in your life. You will sleep like a baby. You will sleep like a baby. The power that has been withdrawing your sleep. The power that has been withdrawing your sleep, that you always have difficulty to find sleep in the night. I pray against that power in the name that is above every other name. I command your out, the atmosphere of your house to be uncomfortable, to be inconvenient for that power to remain. In the name of Jesus, I ask that the ministry angels, the ministry angels will be stationed in your homes with words in their hands. Defending and protecting you, defending and protecting your family. As you go out, they will protect you. As you come back, they will protect you. In the name of Jesus, evil may be falling on your right, thousand may be falling on your right or your left. You will not partake of it. In this land, you will succeed. In this land, you will be victorious. In this land, you will live as overcomers. In the name of Jesus, your home will not be difficult. Life will not be difficult for you. In the name of Jesus, there's somebody that you are struggling with a legal, a legal, I mean, you have a legal case. You have a legal case and you are afraid, you don't know where it's going to end. In the name that is above every other name, the judge of the jury will decide in your favor. In the name of Jesus, the judge of the jury will decide in your favor. In the name of Jesus, maybe it has to do with higher arrest. I had that. I, I just had that now. Maybe it has to do with higher arrest. I don't know what happened and I don't even want to know. But the God of heaven is merciful. The God who is merciful. Who will promise that he will so mercy on those that he will so mercy. He will so mercy on you. You will be faithful. In the name of Jesus. You will come out of that horrible pit. Out of that very clay. the songs of defeat, all the songs of failure that you have been singing all this year, in the name that is above every other name, today they are silent. You will not sing them anymore. All you will be singing now is songs of victory, songs of hallelujah, songs of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, I see Epa coming to you. Epa of destiny, I see Epa of destiny coming to you, my sister. I see a power of destiny coming to you in the name of Jesus. The substance, the resources you're looking for for that project, the Lord will make way. He will make way for you. He will make way for you. You will not die with that dream. I said you will not die with that dream. That dream will manifest. That dream will manifest. That vision will come to pass. The Lord will have to say that his dream did not die. Because you are ordering not to die, I stand as a minister of the gospel, as an oracle of God. I say every dream that the enemy has tried to bury in you, to kill in you, in the name of Jesus, let it begin to manifest. Let it begin to manifest. Oh, the 
chief butler that will be a link that will cause your dream to come to pass. The Lord link you up with that chief butler. In the name of Jesus. Malebro Kaleba Sikaiba. There is a Mephibosheth here that has been abandoned to Lodeva. You are meant to be in the palace. You are meant to be in the palace. The power that has abandoned you to Lodeva, I crucify that power. By the power of heaven, my sister, Rikalipo Sikatayaba, Rekete Yukron Dele, Malipro Katayiba, the God of my father, Rekete Yukron Sikatayaba, Rikata Yukron Dele Bosika. Glory, 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 glory. The power of addiction in your life, I destroy it. That young man, that young man, the power of that addiction, I want to send you to early, early grief. I destroy it in your life. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I destroy it in your life. Lose taste for that thing. Lose desire for that thing. Lose art for that thing. In the name of Jesus. This young woman, Reke Libro Sataiba, you will not fall into wrong hand. You will not fall into wrong hand. You will not fall into wrong hand. The Lord will connect you to the bone of your bone. The flesh of your flesh. Every manipulation of the devil. Even from far. From far. They manipulated that they will wait for you at the junction of getting married. And you will marry to wrong person that will destroy your destiny. That agenda is destroyed. That plan is scattered. Because their gathering is not of God, they are filled. In the name of Jesus, I stand as a oracle of God. And I declare into your life any form of evil manipulation. Any form of evil manipulation against you, against your home, against your destiny, against your future, today is coming again. I see you riding on eagle's way. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Shall we just stretch out our hand to bless our Father in the Lord, who has been a blessing unto us? Let's stretch out our hand, that the Lord Almighty will replenish every virtue that have gone out of him, in the mighty name of Jesus, that whenever we hear from him, it shall be testimony. Whenever we hear from us in this area, it shall be testimony. The Lord will be jealous over his life, over his family, over his ministry. He will finish well, and he will finish strong. He has been a blessing to the body of Christ. God will continue to lift him up higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Daddy, as we pray for you as a church, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be jealous over your life, over your family, over your ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will finish well and you will finish strong. In the name of Jesus. Whenever we hear from you, it shall be testimony. Whenever you hear from us in this assembly, it shall be testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, when the Lord will come for his own, none of us will be found one thing. We will all get home safely. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oni sara re re o baba Sara re re o Olorun ni Agba ni lagba ton Amun ni lamun ton Afun ni lafun ton Asore la se pe Olorun ni science omnipotent ise ki no glory oni bu ore Ibare o ba te re kari aye Owa da ojo ti mo ni le mo le ru Ele ju mare akiri sore Ohun lo ba to le pa tele kan leji Oba to le ti tele kan ni pa Eku ele eku ele Eku ele eku ele You are the living God Is there no one like Ekuwele, 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 ekuwele. You are the living God. Is there no one like you? See what you've done for us. See how you set us free. See how you delivered us. You are the living God. Is there no one like you? Oluwa mi yodi de mo gore amuno mi o aye ba mi ba. Awo mi le o go abo ajo. Oh. 
frustration growing as they will pass, will pass. So goodbye, world. Goodbye, world.
than five to ten minutes, we just want to do a celebration because of what God has done even in our midst this morning and this afternoon. We know, we want to dance a victory dance. If you know that you have been victorious, God has made you to be victorious, I want you to rise up as we welcome our beloved sister, Pastor Oliver Twain, to lead us in five to ten minutes of quality praise just to appreciate God for what he has done. Because I will testify. I don't know about you, but me, I'm going to testify. Hallelujah. Are we excited this afternoon? Amen. Amen. What shall we say unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall we say unto the Lord? Oh, yeah. 
into rock Arkansas was inaugurated April 22nd, 2018. Let every one of us have outstanding testimony Amen. that we will live to remember for good Amen. for the rest of our lives. Amen. This your children, every time we hear from them and every time they hear from us, it will be good news. Amen. And the most important thing is when Ro will become yonder, and the marriage of of the Lamb, when you will come to have your church, none of us will be found wanting. Amen. We will all see you in glory. Amen. We will rejoice with you forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus, and the city of Little Rock and the state of Arkansas, we commit it to your hand. Will not remain the same. Amen. Our great country, United States of America, will not remain the same. Amen. We will do a new thing. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let us share the grace and the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love of, of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you will bless the food. Thank you for the provision. Sanctify it. As we eat, let it nourish our body. And in your kingdom, count us worthy to dine with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.